I wanted to put together this PowerPoint presentation to show you um, to show you this example that I created to illustrate what the velocity of money means and how powerful it can become. Uh, so I like to think of velocity of money when I focus on myself as how fast is my money traveling? Like how is it? How fast is it traveling through my own system? So I have three examples for you, and let me first start with this one. So in example one. We're just going to use your cash. And let's say you have $50,000 and you buy a $50,000 rental. And just so you know, I have clients who have $50,000 rentals, which is why I'm using this example, because it's a low amount. It's a, it's a small dollar amount, but they are getting $1,000 a month in rent. So this isn't too far harebrained. Uh, this is a legit asset that I've seen a client have. So you buy $50,000 on this rental, it's going to earn you $1,000 a month, which is $12,000 a year. So in year two, I'm going to take that $12,000 from my first year of income, and I'm going to sock that into a universal life, an indexed universal life insurance policy. Now, uh, my IUL is going to average about 10% a year based on the rules, so that's the number I'm going off of. So if I have $12,000 in my IUL policy, that is not my income, or that's not my cash that it's requiring. That's $12,000 from a previous investment. That's why I put it in this velocity column that you see here. Um, and at 10%, that's $100 a month, which gives me $1,200 increase. Now I also put that in red because this $1,200 isn't it's not as liquid as having the $1,200 in my bank account, but the income is there. The cash is there available for me to take, but I just wanted to put it in red because it is sitting in this IUO policy. So what happens in year three? Well, in year three, my rental still earned another $12,000 in the previous year. So right now, based on that income, only having $24,000 of rental income from year one and year two, there's not anything in my mind that maybe I'm going to do. And again, maybe you have some other investment opportunities and you would do that. I can't cover everything in this scenario. For me, uh, in this example, I'm going to take the 12 grand and I'm going to put it into my IUL policy again. And that's going to earn me another $100 a month for another 1200 So by the end of year three, I'm going to have $27,600 in my cash value balance in my index universal life policy. So let's say, let's say year four. Okay. Now I have year three's rental income of 12,000. And the reason I like IULs is because I can borrow against my cash value and not affect my insurance policy. Now in this example, I am not giving credit that that balance in your index universal life policy will continue to earn interest if you pull the money out. There are policies that allow you to do that, but for the sake of this example, I'm not taking that into consideration. So let's say I borrow basically the 27.6 from my uh, cash balance and I have the $12,000 of rental income from the previous year. That gives me $39,600 that we're pretending a hard money loan opportunity came about. A hard money loan is basically anything, any money that's switching hands that uh, a financial institution isn't involved with. And generally, hard money indicates that there's an asset that can be collateralized against this velocity, or sorry, against this, um, the money, the loan amount. In this example, I'm only using 2.5%, and that's per month, by the way. Uh, so you take your rental income from the previous year plus the 27600 that was previously in your cash balance, and we do a hard money loan for six months. And that's going to earn you $5,400. You're then going to put back the 27600 into your uh, cash balance. So now you do earn interest on that for the last half of the year. And that's where this $600 comes from, which means by the end of the year, we added another $1,200 of income into that balance at 28.8. dollars 
Okay, so what do we do in year five? Well, I'm still getting the $12,000 a month for my first rental. And I now have $28,000, right? We have $28,800 in my cash balance plus the 12,000 from year four and from year three that I hadn't done anything with. And I earned $5,400 on that hard money loan. Well, guess what? Now I have enough cash to go and buy another rental property that's going to probably be pretty identical to the one that I currently have. And that's what we're showing in this example. So you do that with $53,400 and you can see how I break that down how we came up with the $53,400. And remember, it's still in the velocity column, which means other than the initial $50,000 that I put in, all this money that I'm playing with is the return on my previous investments. And now I'm gonna get $24,000 a year in rental income from two rental properties. That's as far as I'm taking each example as to five years. So let me just show you a summary. In this first example, we used $50,000 of our own cash. That earned us $82,200 $82, over the course of five years. This is how that breaks out. 60 grand from our first rental, $4,800 from interest earned in my cash value policy over five years, the $5,400 from my hard money loan, and then $12,000 in my year five from the second rental. And now, if I look at what is my return on investment? I earned 82. It cost me 50,000 50, to earn that. So the gain is 32,200. I divide that by the cash that I did use, and that gets me a, per, a return on my investment of 64%. Let's look at a second example. In this case, let's look at the same rental property, but instead of using $50,000 of cash, we're gonna do a loan. And 20% down on a rental property is super common. So it's different than the first example where you earned 12,000 because you did not have any sort of financial obligation on borrowed money. But now we have borrowed money and of course people want their money back. Okay, so we take that 9420, same scenario, we're gonna stick that into a cash balance into our IUL policy that's gonna earn us $942 that year. In the third year, exact same in year four, when we do our hard money loan, the $28,260 to play with in a hard money loan. Same scenario, we do that for six months. We'd earn $4,239 on that. In year five, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna buy another rental. In this case, I am going to need to put another $8,000 of my own cash in because I only have $41,919 that I've earned off of my initial four years, off of the initial 10,000 I put in and the 40,000 borrowed. So I do need to put in an additional 8,000 here. But in this case, because I'm using my own money, whether it's from the investments, whether it's from the income I get from the investments or my own personal cash, I'm not gonna have debt on the second rental, which means my monthly income is 1,000, and I'm gonna get 12 grand a year off of that one. Let's break this down. So total personal cash used was $18,081 in cash. Over the course of five years, we earned $67,000 on that. And that's how that, so I used $18,000 on my cash. I got 67 back, which means I have a gain of 49,000. Divide that by the $18,000 of cash that I initially used, and now I'm looking at a 271% return on my money. Okay, last example is gonna be a little bit different because we're gonna say you had the $50,000 of cash available and you're willing to borrow money. What that means is that you can buy five rental properties in year one instead of one rental property. In year two, I just earned $47,000 in my year one. Well. If I'm comfortable borrowing money, I'm probably gonna be comfortable buying another five rental properties. In year three, in this example, I'm gonna say, let's actually just take the 94, put it into an IUL. So what I do in year four, well, let's still do a hard money loan, but now I can do a much larger hard money loan. 
Now year five, I think the scenario would look a little bit different than what we've gone over. How about I do a 1031 exchange on my two rental properties. So with freeing up the cash that I initially put into those, and I'm not even taking into consideration any market gain you'd have on those two rental properties. I'm just assuming you sell it for what you bought it for. So I get that money back. I have $357,000 that those two properties have earned me that I can also play with. You know, I'm going to buy a commercial property. Now, given I just 1031 exchanged my rental properties and I borrowed the money from my cash value, which means those investments aren't going to earn me income. But I do now have a $2 million commercial property going forward. So as a summary of this last example, total personal cash used 52,900 and that was done by year two. Over the course of the five years, you would have earned $522,090. But so if I use 52 and I earned 522, that means I had a $469,000 gain on my cash. Divide that by the cash I used, my rate of return, my, uh, ROI on this scenario is 887%. Uh, and that's where velocity of money comes into play. Time.